Right, here we are, a few a few days later than planned. I have been a little bit poorly, but today we are looking at the best team in Europe. Let me know your thoughts. Ah, Napoli, according to Pep Guardiola, they? they're the best team in Europe at the moment. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And after watching them a little bit on Wisecout, watching a few games on BT Sport the last couple of weeks, there is so many different ways this team can beat you, can beat you for pace, with possession, with wide play, with wingers, with underlaps. And we're going to go through all that today. All right, guys, let's get into today's video. If you are a Patreon, you can download this tactic now. Go ahead to the Patreon down link down in the description. Grab the file and drop it in your tactics folder. If not, if you'd like to support the Patreon, that would be absolutely legendary. So go check out the link down below. But don't worry, if you are not a Patreon, I'm going to go through the team instructions, player roles, player instructions, everything you need to get this 4-3-3 up and running in your FM23 saves. All right, let's go. Okay, so I've played up until sort of like the World Cup break. That's what I tend to do with my videos. Now, I haven't designed this tactic and all my other tactics that are available. I don't do them to suit the match engine. I literally see what I see on from, from stats, from things like StatsBomb, FPREF, um, whoscored.com. What's the other one? Sofa score. And then what I see on, obviously, highlights from, uh, obviously, for Napoli, BT Sport, Champions League games, lots of stuff on Y Scout with individual positions. So I've basically taken what I've seen and then put it into the game. And as you can see, now we are Napoli, so we're going to do quite well. But we've made a really, really good start to the season. I think we would have no problem carrying this form on to the end of the season. Oshiman has got 14 goals, average rating of 7.88, undefeated. And also, I think the defensive record, yeah, defensive record, only seven goals conceded, 31 goals scored. We've done really, really well. Now, let's go and dive into the tactic. At the end as well, we're going to go through a couple, few little clips and just show how the tactic is put together and how it looks in the match engine. But let's go and see this 4-3-3. Okay, so it is a standard pretty much 4-3-3 with just a couple of little rolls and duties and changes that we've made just to help the tactic come together and and as I said at the start of the video one of the main things about Napoli is the different ways they can win a game so obviously they're quite possession heavy they do like to kind of move the ball around quickly short passing but with the advantage of having someone up front like Aussie men who can obviously work channels exceptionally well now watching a lot of his clips I must say his build-up play is I've got to say average He's not the greatest. He's good at holding it off and popping it off. Not too creative, but what he does give, because of his energy, his speed, his power, he gives them an exceptional other option on the break. And you can imagine, obviously, Man United being looking at an Ossiman or looking at a Harry Kane. They've currently got a Vegost. And Ossiman does something that the other two can't do, and that is stretch teams and work in behind. Absolutely superb in the penalty area as well, especially with his head. But just with his pace and power it gives them another option. So there'll be a couple of other tweaks in the tactic just to help us along with that and see if we can feed Ossiman into sort of like working those channels, stretching players, counter-attacking, transitioning, especially when fullbacks have maybe pushed forward on the opponent's side. Can we work those two centre-halves? Now, interestingly, on the right-hand side, we've gone with Di Lorenzo. He's often now coming into these midfield areas, getting on the ball, helping Lobotka out and trying to overload the midfield that way. He also does obviously still support. Now, don't be worried. The inverted wing back still will occasionally get round on overlap. They still, as we've got in the team instructions as well, we're encouraging underlaps because we want him to go on that underlapping run. What we're trying as well to do with a little bit of this, what they try and do is suck play teams towards one side. So they'll have, try and create an overload this side. So remember Di Lorenzo, Lobotka often makes sort of like, Good bursts of pace with his with the with the ball or without the ball. Good runs into these sort of like middle thirds and attacking thirds from deep. And Gissa obviously comes out wide. They've got Politano as well. And then what that does is sucks the play out to one side. And then that obviously leaves players like right here we go. Kavarat Skelia free on the ins, on the left hand side because we want him in like a one v one situation. We want him one v one as much as possible. So that's what they do. They kind of suck teams across and then quickly can they fire it out. Can they even, sometimes what they try and do is try and encourage maybe the left centre half to get involved and leave maybe Osterman a little bit isolated, 1v, sorry, leave the defender a little bit isolated, maybe 1v1 with an Osterman. So they do that as well. They work the ball and then either a ball in the box. You know, Osterman is absolutely fantastic in there. I don't know what FMC in has. 16 heading, 15 jumping reach, 6 foot 1. He's absolutely fantastic in there. But that's what we're going to try and create with a couple of these scenarios that hopefully we'll see in the match engine later. Obviously, in the midfield, we've got a really sound midfield base. Like, Lobotka 
is one of these players that I just knew about. And I thought after watching him on Y Scout this week, he was absolutely fantastic. A little bit of an unsung hero. I thought, oh, Man United, he'd be so good as like a long term, remember, replacement for like Casemiro. But then looking at him, I didn't realise, you know, he's already 20, 28. He will be 28 now in real life. So probably. Probably past the pa probably past the point where Man United will be looking at making a deal for someone like him. But yeah, he's he's one of the guys that I've not noticed so much. Obviously, Kavarat Skellia, Ossiman, um, Kim Min Jae as well, kind of take all the headlines. So yeah, one to look out. Not one to look out for, but one one that I'm happy that I've come across a little bit more. He sits in the mid midfield, quite aggressive, gets the ball, drops in to make a back three. We work that quite well. Left back Oliveira, we've only got him on a full back on support. We're not asking him. He doesn't go absolutely rampaging down that left hand side. So we've just got a full back on support. Remember, he's got Cavert cover at Skellier in front of him. So we need to be a little bit careful of how much we overload that left hand side. Obviously, in Dombole, on Dombole is going in there, but we're just asking him just to support. And the balance has been brilliant. He still gets into these like deep areas, crossing from the byline and stuff. Obviously, we're dominating the ball as well, so we'll get forward. But he does it sensibly, which I think is key. It leaves us. I think that's one reason why we've had a really good defensive record that we haven't gone too crazy with these defensive in, with these defenders in terms of their attacking instructions. Middle two, we've got Angissa, an absolute powerhouse, and then we've been using Dembele, Dembele in there. We've had to do a lot of rotation after the last few weeks. It's a hectic period coming up to the World Cup, but obviously Zelinski will be in there normally as the Mazala. Okay, so let's go into the team instructions one by one. So Murray is sweeper keeper on defend. You could put that support, but I just like defend just for a little bit more help. Generally, in risk taking, he often just plays it out from the back, so I want him nice and basic. We've got Di Lorenzo, inverted wing back on support. But I've just asked him to dribble less. Right centre half, we're obviously looking at. He's been injured for me. I was over him. There he is, Romani. There he is, Romani. Kosovan uh, international, really good defender. Right footed, left footed, decent as well. Ball playing defender on defend, no playing instructions. King Ming Jae. Ball playing defender and dribble more. Dribble more for a central def ball playing central defender is probably one of my new favourite kind of little PIs in the game. However, you look at King Ming Jae's heat map, he does like to travel, he does carry, he does get further forward. It suggests he likes to carry the ball, perhaps he can maybe get a little bit further forward. Left hand side, you've got Oliveira, you've also got uh, Makarui as well. We've just got that a bog standard fullback on support. Into the middle midfield, Lobopka, deep line playmaker on defend, Engisa, ball play, box, box to box midfielder, and then Ndombele or the uh, Zelinski role, the Mazala. That could you could ask for it. I just wanted to go against the central midfielder. If you look at Zelinski's heat map as well for the season, I'll put these heat maps up for you to see. Zelinski's heat map it does work this left sort of like space a little bit, the le left side a lot more. So that's why I've gone for a Mazala. And then Politano or a Lozano out on this right hand side, just a bog standard winger on support. And then Kavarach Skelia, I did a little tweet, a little poll on my YouTube channel actually, asked seeing what he does. And this is the issue that I'm kind of getting with the role that he stays so wide, so wide to try and create that 1v1 and obviously un un create a little bit of space for those underlaps. Because of those underlapping runs, it gets him the opportunity to be a little bit of a more of a 1v1 because set right you now the right centre half will be occupying maybe a run from a midfielder, a run from Oliveira, the left back. So he doesn't get as wide as that I what I want him to, even with the instructions stay wider. Now I'm gonna do a little video of it, hopefully in the next few weeks, about the difference between a winger and an inverted winger. And I think the natural thing is not to having him as a winger because you would expect him just to sit on the touchline, cross balls with his left foot. That hoping when I do this little test is not the case. And because of his player, he's sort of like his traits, runs with the ball often, cuts inside with both, cuts inside from both wings. I'm hoping that he will even start even wider, but because of his PIs and that he's right footed, he'll still cut in. So that's something that I am going to be trying on the channel over the next couple of weeks. But for just for now, inverted wingers, take more risks and stay wider. And up front, we've got Osherman, advance forward, proper number nine, no player instructions for him. Okay, into the team instructions. So we've gone for shorter passing, wide, because we want to try and get those two wide players, or in particular, Kavarat Skelly are on that left-hand side as wide as possible. Passing to space, important because we want that pass potentially when it's on, or a midfield pass. To get awesome and going in that, generally in that right channel. He likes to obviously write, work the right channel a little bit more. He did score a goal against, or, or it was actually my Roma side. Uh, Chris Smalling tracked him and he hit that beautiful shot 
across the goalkeeper when Napoli beat Roma earlier on the season. So we want to create that little bit of a... I think it will also help with transitions as well. Can we get him going the other way? And I'll show you some games in a minute, some goals. Absolutely worked wonderfully well. Underlap left and right, because we've got the two wide players... They, what they try and do is encourage underlapping runs from midfielders or even from the fullbacks at times. Hopefully then, a trial's attention to the middle third. And then from that, it will then hopefully leave, as I said before, Kavarat Skellier, maybe even a wide player on the right-hand side, a little bit more space to maybe work a 1v1. Okay, shorter passing, slightly higher tempo. They're quite, not passive, but... One of their many traits is dominating the ball. They don't rush it. They don't just kick it long. They play short. They obviously go work channels. They do. This is why they're so good because they've got so many different ways. And I think something, I don't know. I don't know if it's a Serie A thing against an English thing, but Napoli seem to use Oshiman so much better than what a Manchester City use Haaland. We don't see the runs and the explosive pace from Haaland. We, we saw it in like the first game of the season against uh, West Ham, and we haven't really seen much of it since. And I'm just in, I don't know if it's because generally teams in England play with a much lower block, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, if you have any ideas on that. Why seem, Napoli seem to be playing a similar way to Manchester City, but seem to get a better tune out of Oshiman. I think potentially is the way that Spalletti sets up compared to Pep in terms of there's opportunities and he makes those runs. Haaland and then the midfielder Man City don't give it to him whereas maybe Napoli naturally are encouraged to do it by Spalletti so maybe that's the reason let me know your thoughts down in the comments anyway right never time wasting run at defence no other instruction we don't really want to work it into the box we don't need to necessarily hit crosses early we'll just do it naturally we'll cross it into Osman when the time is right in transitions counter press counter in very good at pressing the ball and getting the ball back and winning the ball high up. Take short kicks from the goalkeeper as well, but no player preference. Can go to Lobotka at times, can go to the centre half, can go to the two fullbacks. And then out of possession, pretty simple. Just one up on the trigger press or more often. High press, high line, not the absolute killer. I'm just finding sometimes the player can just get a little bit. Our sort of like passing network and sort of like heat maps just look a little bit. Average positions just look a little bit too condensed for me. So I've just, I think after pre-season, lowered it from that one just to, whoop, just to the higher one, not much higher. And then no other instructions. I may look at the drop-off at some point. I thought we were maybe, because we were so compact as well, we we're maybe going to get caught out over the top. But I'm keeping my eye on that. If I notice it's getting caught, caught over the top, on a regular basis, then that'll be the first one that I try and uh, add in just to help us with dropping off a little bit when there's that little bit of a danger of a ball going over the top. All right, everybody, so that is the tactic. Go plug it in. As I said, it's a very, I think it's a very good football manager style tactic. You will do well with You need that pace up front. That is absolutely key. You need that pace up front from our seamen. That needs to be the case. If you're playing with like a Harry Kane, it won't work. So make sure you have that good, strong, central striker that can work those channels for you. And as I said, Patreons, go check out the tactic link down in the description. I'm at 48 Patreons, so it'd be good. Can we get to 50 by the end of the month? That would be absolutely legendary. £3 a month, support the channel, get the free tactic downloads every single week. All right, guys, let's go and see how this bad boy looks in the match engine. Okay, so these are the results so far. We've had two defeats in the Champions League. We did qualify out of the Champions League, though, after we beat Spurs last game at the uh, group stage. It was um, a crazy game. 4-3, we ended up winning it, but we've had some really good results. In particular, in here, we're going to look at the Roma game and the uh, Juventus game. Two 4 nilers against two of the big boys. Okay, so here we are. Here's King Ming Jae jiving forward. That dribble more team instruction is so good when you play against the low block in particular as well. Look, we're fine there. We're fine at the moment. Maybe, you know, if there's a little bit of a count, we might be in a little bit of trouble. But when you're playing against a low block, you need someone from deep who's going to break the lines. And he's done that really well. Not a great pass, but we're going to get the second balls if we can. Oshiman gets it down and a lovely slip in. Because they've obviously been in that transition of heading the ball out and then looking at a counter-attack, they're a little bit all over the place. We take full advantage and Oshiman fires home to make it 1-0. He does score all four in, these, in this game. Lozano getting nice and wide. And Gisa, really good underlapping run. And just like the amount of goals Oshiman scores in around the six-yard box is absolutely mental. And there's Di Lorenzo into Nguisa, into Oshiman, just working the shot. That goal is very similar to the one he did actually score against Roma in the Serie A game earlier on the season. And then here's the press. Like, it's all Oshiman. It's all working. Like, there's no beautiful passing in there. It's... Not even quick, you know, we're asking for slightly higher tempo, so we're not forced. I don't think we're forcing it too much, but obviously the runs, 
the quality of the players, obviously the quality of the players, obviously the quality of the players helps, but it's basic, isn't it? It all looks pretty basic. Okay, here's the first goal. We've just got the ball back and off we go again. Kim Ming Jae driving forward. Look at Lorenzo. He's in there making a sort of like... So we start with like a 2-3 shape with the two full backs. Obviously, Lorenzo coming in quite narrow. Di Lorenzo, sorry, and obviously Lobotka sitting off. Kim Ming Jae is now joined in. Into Nguisa. Lovely pass into Osimhen. Work, working that right channel. Pass into space, potentially, is the root cause of that. Nguisa... And then, it, to be fair, it's a finish from the edge of the area. But look, we've got them camped in. Lorenzo's nice and high. Luiz is nice and high. But they're not going on overlaps. They're just supporting the play behind. Creating that overload as well with Di Lorenzo is in playing as that inverted wing back. Okay, and then here we go. Here's the second. So Di Lorenzo picks it up. Drives inside. In. Quick movement. Kind of typical kind of Osherman build-up play there. Dropping off, which he does do a lot. But very simple. Knocks it off to cover at Skellia. Rui there supporting in behind, which I, which I do like. I think the natural thing when you're playing with a strong team is to just have two complete wing-backs. Get on, get long. But especially when you're playing with a back four, I am liking this Rui. Just in here, it just helps us recycle possession a little bit. In particular now, because King ming is going to go on a run again. He does pick out a wonderful pass to gather at Skilly, who's coming in. <laughs> he does do those sort of runs. Doesn't do them that often. Says he likes to be out out here. He will often only make them runs when the ball has been on the right hand side. Um, but it's a wonderful pass. That's the inverted winger, then I suppose. Wonderful pass. Absolutely smash it in. We were two 0 up after what eight minutes. Osherman working the channel once again. Looks so good. Transitions. Cabret Skellia in. Bang. It's a goal that you would see time and time again for Napoli. If we bring it back, look. So we're building up from the back. Cabret Skellia in. It's all pretty simple. It's quick, isn't it? It looks quick, even though we're after slightly higher, but because of the shorter passing. And then, look, we've knocked it about a little bit. They've obviously not got too much of a low line. And then Oshiman is in, chasing or Brenner, Bonucci. He's always going to do Bonucci for pace. Gets in, Cavaret Skellier backing up. And when you've got quality like him, you can't give him chances like that. And then the last one, out wide, lovely switch. See, if for me, if I'm being picky... I think he would be wider. He would be wider so he can get fronted up against the defender a little bit more. But that's just, you know, we've asked him to stay wider and look at how narrow that position is for that inverted winger. So definitely a video that I'm going to be covering over the next few weeks on the channel. But good play by the Georgian. Back to Rui. Backing up. There you go. Driving forward. They've got themselves into a low block at that point. Gives Rui the opportunity. But he's not trying to get in behind. It's a really good supporting Full back on support. Who would who would have thought it? Really good duty to get into your saves this year. Um, I'm starting my live Twitch save very soon. And I'm really thinking of actually using this one because it gives you a really good base no matter where you are in the world. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Spalletti, the best, Napoli, the best team in Europe. What do you think to the tactic? Let me know as well. Tactic ideas for next week. Uh, this is coming out uh, Thursday. So I need your ideas ready for Sunday night, if that's possible. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Take care. See you later.